good evening everybody so today we are going to discuss about process to process delivery uh, in this uh, as we know there are two kinds of protocol udb and tcp but before moving to process and process delivery i would like to add on some light on uh, what is node to node delivery and what is host to host delivery so you you know about data link layer right data link layer is responsible for delivery of frames between two neighboring nodes over a link okay and this is known as node to node delivery while the network layer is responsible for delivery of datagrams between two hosts right and this is known as host to host delivery now if you want to communicate on internet in that case uh, if you are want to send some data between two nodes it's okay you can transfer it by using data link layer or network layer but if you want to send data to some node certainly it has to be fetched by some process right for example you are opening google chrome right you are demanding for let's say youtube.com right so youtube.com server should reply and the reply should receive in google chrome only right you don't want that it should open in let's say uh, window media player application right so on your system there may be thousands of processes at the same time running on right now to make sure that uh, you have a, your data reaches to uh, the same or correct process you need to make some process to process delivery and that is done by using TCP and UDP. Now, in transport layer, uh, you have a process to process delivery. The transport layer is uh, responsible for that. While uh, a transport layer is basically uh, what it does is that it make delivery of your packet part of a message from one process to another. Right. Now, in this particular case, uh, we are going to discuss server client server paradigm. I am using Forozen book for uh, basic introduction. It's a good book, right? For advanced learning, you can move on to some other book. Uh, personally, I refer Kuros and Rose, right? That's a very fantastic book to read on. Very interesting and uh, very exciting. Yeah. So now transport layer is responsible for process to process delivery. Correct. So you have to remember this. Now, uh, let us uh, let us learn by using this diagram. For example, there is a process called P1. Let's say uh, this process is your Google Chrome. Now there is server over here. This is destination. This is sender, right? Now you want to send some data from sender to destination. For example, if you want to send, you can directly send to this router, from this router, this router, this router to this router, and goes on by using data link layer. If you want to send some data from this node to this node, you need to have network layer, right? But if you want to send this data from this process to this process, then you need to know some other address that is known as port address. This kind of delivery is known as process to process delivery. Got it? Now, for example, whenever you want to send some data, right? So you have uh, used some sort of process number. For example, uh, you are using some kind of a, a, a web browser. You want to avail day uh, daytime uh, services. So you want to know what's the daytime, right? Now in that case, let's say you inquiry to the server, right? Now to to uh, let's say send data to a running process on server, you need to know the port number on which daytime process is running on server. That port number is 13 over here. That is well known. Let's say you know about it, right? Now, to send data so that uh, you will be able to receive some correct information, you need to send your port number as well. That means client's port number. In this case, it is 52,000. Got it? So, whenever you compose a packet, you are going to add on 52,000 as a source port number, 13 as a destination port number, along with your data and you are going to send this packet onto the network and when this network pa this packet is received at the network a reply will come back and in that case source will be 13 destination will be 52,000 and data will be there got it so this this is how it works in case you know what is port number now how this range is defined right uh, this range is defined by using internet authority right internet authority authority has divided this range into uh, 65535 uh, but before that uh, you should make sure that ip address will be there 
IP address will be identifying the host, port number will be identifying the process. Got it? So now how internet authority, uh, internet assigned number authority has divided this port number into three ranges. This range from 0 to 1023, this range is designed for well-known port number. You should not use this. Uh, this is reserved or, or each and every port within this is has some definite meaning. This range 1024 to 49,153 51. Right. You can register this port number along with IANA. For example, you want to create some process. You can use any of the port number, but you have to register it. 49,152 to 65,535. This range is dynamic. You can use without any license or without any permission. Got it. So this is how IANA works. Got it. So let's move on to socket address. Now, uh, socket is a term which is used collectively to define IP address and port number. For example, process to process delivery needs two identifier. First one is IP address and second one is port number at each end to make a connection. Now, the combination of IP address and port number is known as socket address. The client socket address defines client process, right? And server socket address defines server process uniquely. Correct. So whenever you want to send some data through transfer layer protocol, you need a pair of soft socket address. In that case, the pair will contain client socket address as well as server socket address. In actual, there is four piece of information, ser server IP address, server port number, client IP address, client port number. But collectively, you are going to say it as a socket address. Okay. So this is done. Now, multiplexing and demultiplexing now whenever you send some data there will be some multiplexing or demultiplexing at transport layer reason is at the sending side let's say this is sending side this is sender this is it, receiver at the sending side there are many processes running on right which need to send packet right however since there is only one transport layer protocol at a time right so there is many to one relationship obviously to identify many to one relationship you need to use multiplexer right so this multiplexing is required now the, this protocol what it does is that it accept message from different processes right with from different different num port number after adding the header the transport layer passes the packet to network layer that is ip got it and at the receiving side while going through data link physical layer at the receiving side all these packets, their header is read, readed and they are demultiplexed and correspondingly pass on to the destination process. Now, there are two kind of services uh, in transport layer. It can be either connectionless or it can be connection oriented. In connectionless, uh, we have we already know that uh, in connectionless, you no need to set up any connection. Packets are sent from one particular uh, node to another without needing any connection establishment or connection release so packet are not numbered the, uh, there may be some delay there may be some lost there may be some packet which are out of sequence right and there is no even acknowledge no there is no acknowledgement even right but in case of connection oriented one you are going to establish a connection right after that you are going to uh, transfer the data when the transfer is done you are going to uh, use uh, terminate the connection so you, we have two kinds of protocol. We are going to study one by one. But before that, I would like to uh, tell you that we need some kind of error control uh, in transfer layer. And what is the need of that? Now, there are two transfer, two kind of transfer. Uh, one is reliable, and second one is unreliable. Now, in reliable transport, reliable transmission, uh, if you want that. Uh, uh, for example, you are transferring something and your application requires application layer requires re reliability, right? In that case, you need to use a uh, reliable protocol at transport layer. Otherwise, you can use unreliable. Now, it says that if you need, uh, let's say, if you remember, data link layer is also has some kind of flow control and error control. So why we need flow control or error control? Right now I'm discussing about error control only. Why we need uh, error control at uh, transport layer? Reason is 
reliability uh, at the data link layer is between two nodes for example here to here here to here here to here here to here right now we need reliability between two ends as well now uh, if we need reliability between two ends the network layer is unreliable because it takes the best effort to deliver a packet now we need to implement reliability at transport layer so reason is there is no guarantee for example a packet is transferred over here there is no error control over here error control is here to here but here there is no error control here there is no error control here there is no error control so data can be corrupted so that's why at transport layer we need some kind of error control mechanism now where we are standing right now so in this is protocol stack in which we are at transport layer we are going to discuss udp we are going to discuss tcp we are not going to discuss stcp stcp uh, but still it exists nowadays so let's move on i'm going to pause this video over here